This is Jabez breaking free, part three. Jabez, now say that real fast. Jabez breaking free, part three. So uh, I'll give you the verses. First Chronicles chapter four, verse nine and ten. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. God granted him that which he requested. So last week we, we began to look at this blessing this good word that was spoken when we spent an hour talking about this blessing last week, this, this impart, impartation. Uh, we, we went all the way back to Genesis. God made man in his image and then he blessed him, told him to have dominion, imparted something to him. And we ended up, uh, you know, with going up to Genesis 12, and here he's blessing Abraham. And Abraham, I'll give you a land which was an echo back to Eden. It was uh, looking at the holy of, of holy of holies, which was really looking at Christ in you, you in Christ. Uh, you know, Paul got a hold of this. I'm telling you, Paul didn't come up with a new doctrine. Paul took the Old Testament scriptures and wrote about them in, in the light of Christ. Yeah. I think so many times that, you know, we all have been that way because we want to say we're not under the law anymore. Well, actually you are under a more stringent law than you were to start with. Now you're under the law of the Holy Spirit. Now you're under the law of life. Okay? Okay. But we want to just say, you know, okay, I'm not under the law anymore, as if to say I'm free to do whatever. Paul never said you were, were free in that sense. He said you were slaves at one time under, under sin. Now, now you submit yourself. Now you become slaves under righteousness. Okay? But I understand what they're saying. It's like, hey, we're not under the law. I don't have to try to keep the Ten Commandments. No, you don't try to keep them anymore. You live them. You're, you're a living epistle. Because some people misconstrue. They think, oh, well, it's greasy grace. I'm not saying greasy grace. I'm saying it comes into your heart and changes your very desires. Yes. Yes. Okay? That, that's, that's a difference. But that's why Paul would say you are, you are the temple of the living God. And that, that was the naos. That was the holy of holies. That's, that was the Greek word, holy of holies. You're the naos. So he, he got that. And I just love, I've, I've learned, been learning so much in our study of Leviticus and, and more so what was taking place in the temple, how they came on duty, how they the course of the priest worked and how the lots fell and how they offered morning sacrifice and what they did and uh, how they burnt the incense and who burnt it and what all was taking place and it, it, it's amazing amazing would love to just sit and watch that you know to watch it in light of Christ my gosh uh, but uh, you know he told Abraham he's telling him about this blessing It'll give you a land. And, you know, Israel, they, they were chosen. But they, but they wasn't chosen to be an end in themselves. In other words, you're just chosen to be chosen. We kind of grew up into that. You're just chosen for what reason? Well, they were chosen to bear the awful responsibility of bringing the seed to the world. Bringing Christ was going to come through them. So, yeah, they were chosen. But we were just chosen to be chosen. You, you know what I mean? Just, hey, yeah, we're the chosen. For what reason? You got God just doesn't do stuff. Everything has a purpose. So if you have been chosen, 
You've been chosen to bring a blessing to be the blessing to somebody else. So if you want to celebrate your chosenness, then we've got to figure out why you're chosen. But anyway, uh, remember that was the promise. That was the blessing that Abraham, through your seed, the one that's going to come, that's going to bruise his, his head. You know, it's... God says, I will bless you. You will carry weight and honor in the world so that people will listen to you. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I, I love that, that verse. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Man, so many people trying to make their name great. God says, I will make your name great. And he's saying there, and this is all out of Genesis 12, kind of went over this last week. He said you'd be contagious. Everybody's worried about being contagious now. Coronavirus. Well, you got the, the blessing virus in you, if you want to call it that. You're contagious with the Holy Spirit. And anyone that comes around you and yields to what you're saying, affirms what you're saying, they'll catch what you got. They'll catch the blessing. Anyone who opposes it, they're opposing life itself and they will know the curse. Guys, I've seen this. I'm not these ain't just words. This is really the way it is. It's, it really is the way it is. So this was this blessing to Abraham and You know, I told you it looked back to Eden, but it also looked forward. Abraham looked forward. He looked back to Eden, but he looked forward to a city whose builder and maker is God. He, Abraham, this kind of blows my mind. Somebody, I think, was telling me the other day they're, they're wanting, you know, to go build them another temple over there and start offering red heifers and doing all this silly stuff. Listen, Abraham himself knew that wasn't the land. He did. If, if so, he wouldn't have looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. Jesus comes on the scene. You are the city. You've come to the city, Mount Zion. That old virus just real estate. It was a signpost. It was type and shadow, but it don't mean no more now than, than Lake Okeechobee down in Florida. It don't. It's just some dirt. I don't know, That's those things ain't possible to say, or uh, are popular, they're possible to say, but. That land was just a sign bus. The promise was to every family, everyone who would believe, to everyone. And you know, that's good because you and I were Gentiles. So if it was still about land over there and promises over there, you know what? We might as well go to the house right now because ain't nothing for us. God didn't have two covenants. I'll make a Gentile covenant and I'll make an Israel covenant. It's one covenant. One covenant. Now, to Abraham, the, the, the one true God came and revealed himself to Abraham. Now, I want to say the one true God, remember where they were raised up. And even in today's society, when people start talking to you about God, you better ask them which God they're talking about. Yes. Because and Paul said there's Lord's many and God's many, but unto us there's just one, the only one true God, the only true reality, yes. the one who is truth himself. And, and listen, there's a lot that will even come and talk to you about Christ. But when you scratch through the surface, you'll find out they're not talking about Jesus Christ. They're talking about you, Christ. And that's where that'll go, too. So you better find out, are we talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Now, I'm joined to him, but make no mistake, I'm not him. That's right. Amen. Amen. You, you understand what I'm, I'm talking about. He's my life, but I'm not him. Okay? So... We just got to clarify on some things sometimes. <clears throat> Abraham had the only one and true God. 
And you know what he became? He became the God of Abraham. Right? So in all these, in all the world, everybody had their gods. This Jehovah became the God of Abraham. All the other gods were just idols anyway, dumb idols. Pieces of wood and stone carved out or moons or bugs or alligators, whatever it is they worship. So the God who revealed himself to Abraham became the God of Abraham. Now think about what I'm telling you. He became the God of Paul when he showed up on the Damascus when it pleased God to reveal his son in me. He became the God of Paul. You understand what I'm saying? He became the God of Paul. And then God revealed himself to Isaac. God revealed himself to Jacob. He became the God of Isaac, became the God of Jacob. And Jacob, in that revelation, changed his name. And now he becomes not just the God of Abraham, not just the God of Isaac, but now he becomes the God of Israel, which was what all the people were called. Now it's starting to get personal. personal to me. Now I'm getting included in it. Now as long as he's the God of Roger over there, I'm sort of left out. But when he's the God of us, the God of Israel, now... I'm starting to get included here. Yeah. And I don't know how, how you ever think about these things, but it's actually, it, it's, it's amazing that, that God in, in title joined himself to, to humans. <coughs> God joined himself to, to his creature. He became... I mean, just think, he became known in history as the God who had joined himself to Abraham. See, something different about all this together because now you would have to go over here and go to some temple or go over here to something. But here, this was before the temple, before any of that stuff. This is the God who had joined himself to Abraham. And he became, and, and you know, he became known in the land as, as that because the other ones would, they come up on him one time and stole his wife. And here's old coward Abraham. You would have think he would have stepped up and fought for his wife. He said, nah, tell him you're my sister. They took her off to his harem. God missed him that night and told him, you better not lay a hand on, on her. God made Abraham's name great. I know that that God is with you. That's what they would say. I know your God is with you. It would have been followed up all the way up through Egypt. We knew your God was with you. When they were in the wilderness and nobody would lay a hand on them. When they went down into the land and they thought they were grasshoppers. I'm telling you, those people over in Jericho were scared to death because they knew that God was with them. I'm telling you, the Christian church today, they don't know that God is with them. He's up yonder somewhere. He's over on planet heaven, three miles left of the sun. They knew God was with them. Gosh, I'd love to just stop right there on that one and say, do you know God has joined himself to you? He will make your name great. And, and wherever you go, you're known as the people that's joined to God. He's joined to you. Gosh, oh, I... Do. I mean, times, I mean, how many people are out there today hoping God visits them? God, I hope he pours out something on us today. Well, if he does, let me tell you something. This holds true for this building. The roof leaks. That's what he'll be pouring out on you. The roof leaks. Don't, well, you won't see it today, but there's some few spots around here. So it ain't no holy anointing. It's the roof leaking. He's in you. You have the blessing, the union. I, I, I was going to read it now, but I'll, I'll read it later because I want you to see it. It's a one-time thing. But Deuteronomy 28. So, and this, this blessing of Deuteronomy 28 applies to every part of your life. Not a Sunday morning or a Wednesday morning or some kind of special anointing. The anointing lives in you and it applies. And he says the blessing will hunt you down. The blessing will pursue you. It'll chase you as you try to go out into your building to get the weed eater. The blessing will be on your heels. It'll bless every part of your life. 
And Numbers chapter 6, the priest every morning, every morning when he would come out and they would put that burnt offering on the sacrifice, he would raise, he would, let me just read it to you. Uh, it's, it's, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. He would the, the high priest or the priest would come out as they put that burnt offering on, and he would he would raise his hands up and he would say, "The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them every day." I mean, it's how they began their day. It's how they began. Now imagine, Israel began their day with this blessing. Jabez heard this every day. He didn't believe it. Jabez heard that blessing every day. Now all of that blessing was looking forward, guys. It was looking forward to a little phrase called, In that day. In that day, well, guess what, guys? We're in that day. We're in that day. And that blessing, guys, was undergirded here with covenant. It had a found, the blessing had a foundation that it laid upon. You know, all oh, y'all got a house, and all that house got a foundation. The foundation of this whole thing was covenant. I mean... Let's go over here and read just a little bit. Hebrews 6. Verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by, by himself, or because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee, multiply, and I will... I mean, you get that surely. You just read it like all... God is saying, surely, without a doubt, beyond any shadow of a doubt, because I am who I say I am, I will bless you of a surety. But see, we spend our whole time, if we don't disqualify ourselves, we got some good, educated preacher that will disqualify us. Right? Somebody in our life, just like Jabez's mother, disqualified him. Somebody in our lives, usually a whole bunch of people, circumstances included, disqualifies us, and we don't believe that. But it's here. He swore, he caused, he could swear by no else. He swore by himself. Saying, Surely I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. We're talking about Abraham. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God will, and usually when people join in covenant, they would call on God to witness. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, I guess that's us, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, two immutable things here in just a few minutes, we're going to partake of two immutable things, the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. You see, all this is going to be pointing right to it. Yeah. Strong consolation. So you might have some strong proof here that your mind might be totally convinced this is who God is and it's his desire and what he has done and blessed I will bless thee who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul now we'll talk about a lot of times the anchor of our soul what is the anchor of your soul that God is who he says he is that's your anchor, not that you've done something or you, uh, it's God who, who he says he is. That's the reason it's so important to know who Jesus Christ is because in him you will see who God is. He came to reveal him. And if you don't know who he is, you have no anchor for your soul because you can't trust him. Or every time you sin or mess up, you'll run away from him. That's right. 
because you don't believe it. You believe who you think he is, some judge. And when, a, when you mess up and the judge don't turn his chair or he votes you off the stage, right? Then he's no anchor to my soul. The only anchor to my soul is he is who he says he is. And he gave us strong consolation. All of that was revealed in Jesus Christ. Both sure and steadfast. And which entereth into that within the veil. Entereth into that which was within the veil. I mean that was the very presence of where he was in this holy boat. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever, not after the Levitical order, after the order of Melchizedek. Man. Wow. What he's saying here, God who is true. Right? He is true. God who is true. He speaks and he cannot lie. He cannot lie. If he says light be, guess what? Light's going to be. He wasn't lying about it. Pow, there's light. When he says dry land appear, guess what? Dry land appear because he does everything by faith and who he is. And his, uh, when his words comes out of his mouth, the Holy Spirit takes it and gives substance to us. And that's the way it is. But he still undergirded all his work with covenant. All his words with covenant. So that we have a foundation to put our faith on. And a covenant here, guys, is more than a promise. It's, it's statement. Covenant, it's statement by the shedding of blood. It says, even if it kills me, I will bless you. Do you get that? Even if it kills me, I will bless you. I will keep my word. And usually when people made a covenant, guys, they called on some witnesses to come and behold. But here he is. Who's God going to call upon? He swore by himself that in blessing, I will bless you. Which means God himself has said, this is my purpose and I will fulfill it. Even if I, if I don't fulfill it, I'll cease to be God. I will not be God without blessing you. I will keep this even if it kills me. Now, out of this, out of this covenant here comes words, and it's covenant language, like uh, faithfulness. What do we mean by faithfulness? I mean, you've got you to see this through your life. Faithful, does that just mean, oh, he's, he's faithful. Listen, there are people who are faithful to come to church every Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something right here. Who, who will come to church and never smoke, never chew, never have a glass of wine, never say a cuss word or any of those things, Right? And we'll call them faithful, and yet they sin more than the people who don't even come. Because I'm going to tell you, one of the worst sins of the church, Paul went over and over and over and over and over, was gossip. The same thing that 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 Jesus would would tell them about, uh, you know. Faithfulness, what faithfulness? That that means. Instead of describing this to somebody showing up all the time, we need to give these words definition in God who is the truth. That God is faithful to his word. He cannot lie. God is faithful to his word. And then out of those kind of words come the words like loving kindness. Who our, who our Bible, the King James, in American language, has translated it the word mercy. In, in, the, in the Hebrew, it was loving kindness. Now listen, loving kindness sounds a whole lot different than mercy. Because mercy sounds like I really want to knock you upside of the head, but I'm going to have mercy on you. Right? Loving kindness sounds different, don't it? If I was going to say, I want to have loving kindness on you, that sounds way different than having mercy on you. But yet, it's one word. 
this Hasead word, this word of covenant. So when you go read the, your Bible, just knock out the word mercy. It might help you a little bit. Put in the word loving kindness. His loving kindness endures forever. His loving kindness endures forever. Now what does that mean? It means God, loving kindness or mercy means God now in action. God now in action. God is now doing what did he say he was going to do? He was going to bless you. See, you forgot that quick when I said God is now doing what he said he was going to do. You forgot that quick because you're not used to it. God is now doing in his loving kindness. He ever lives to bless you. Jesus ever lives to mediate right there to bring the blessing of God to you. Do you understand who you are? You were created to be blessed. He will do it because why? He's faithful. He's faithful to his word. So loving kindness is his action word of blessing you now. Which brings us to another word here that they stack right up on top of each other. It's called righteousness. It's another covenant word meaning God is faithful and he acts in loving kindness. He achieves what the covenant said he would do. That is, he keeps covenant relationship to us. That is, he's righteousness. You see, righteousness takes this faithfulness and loving kindness together. Now here we have this righteousness. I don't know how you look at these words, but I mean, when you see them in the beauty of the covenant, man, they're... Righteousness, it, it, it's here's what he promised, and he does what he promised. Here's the promise, and he does it. Righteous, right? Unrighteous was mean, I say one thing, do another. Do you, do you, can you see the difference? He says one thing, you know, Jesus would say this out of the mouth, uh, you know, they, they praise me or whatever they do with, my, with their mouth, but their heart's far from it. In other words, their, their lips are saying one thing. But their actions are doing something else. But God is righteous. Now think about this. So his word says, I will bless you. Now God is righteous, meaning he cannot do anything other than bless you. Are you with me here? In blessing, I will bless you. I will multiply. I will make your name great. Now, what's our part in this covenant? Our part in this covenant is we believe it. That's our part. Well, I thought I had to do it. I heard a guy say yesterday, you got to say 13 Hail Marys. Throw salt over your left shoulder, hold up one foot, point. <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? And you know, we believe on him. And you know that word believe there is the same word as faith. So it's... It's not that I have faith in myself. I, my faith is in his faith of who he is. Does that make sense? That's how I live by the faith of, of Jesus Christ. I have faith that he is who he says he is. And he will do and is doing and will ever do what he says he will do. That, that's who he is. That's where my faith is. You know... I was brought up that, that God dealt every man a measure of faith. That's not scripture. Like, okay, Patty gets more faith, and Kathy gets a little bit of faith, and Roger gets, you know, this much. No. He dealt every man the measure of faith. The measure, one measure. That's the faith of Jesus Christ. And if you had more and I had less, I'm better off than you anyway, because he said the faith of a grain of mustard seed. I could say to yon mountain be removed and it be removed. So you might have two quarts. All I got is a little grain of mustard seed, but it don't matter. Because it ain't about my faith. It's my faith in who he is, who he says he is. You with me? We trust him who is righteous. By trusting him, what? Well, I'm counted as righteous. 
I sure am. I'm accounted as righteous. Now it comes right back to what he said to Abraham. Those that come to you and bless you, that, that listen to what you're saying, they will be blessed. Why? Because you've been made righteous because it, that was imputed to Abraham just like it's imputed to you. And, and God swore. I mean, I just read it in Hebrews. God swore by himself that it, because he could swear by no one. God who could never lie swore by himself and undergirded that with the blood covenant. He's saying, I am committed to this. This is the way it's going to be. I love it. I don't know about you, but I love it. This is the way it's going to be. I will bless you. Now, we got a problem here, though. We got a problem. Man has defected in the darkness. Man has run away from the God who wants to bless him and be united to him. Man has defected in the death. Man's new state of being is death. Not something that's going to happen to you. That's your state of being. I mean, you. Know, I don't know if people get. To, people think death is something that happens. At the end of life. Uh-uh. Life happens at the end of death. You, you get it? We got it all backwards. We've been called out of death into life. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay? And when this old body dies, then I'm going to really life. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to really life in. Full, fully life. But... God has said, I will not be defeated to turn off of my purpose. My purpose to restore mankind, to redeem mankind. I, I've announced this blessing to Abraham and through his seed, which is Christ, to every family of the earth. Here's just a little side note, a little question for you. Is God first creator, then redeemer? Or is God first redeemer, then creator? Now you're looking at me like, I don't know which way to answer that. Well, let me tell you what. God was redeemer before he was creator. Because the lamb stood slain before the foundation of the world. You, you, you see, what he, if he created first and then redeemed, it means he's not a sovereign God. He didn't know what he was doing. So I'm just wanting to tell you that who he is... A redeemer is older than even the creation. Yeah. You know, he, the, uh, you know what happens? We get a coronavirus and we call up all the smart people mm -hmm. to find some cure when God is all ready to cure before the disease ever got on board. Yes. It, you you, you yes. with? It? Yeah. Okay. So, so the seed, we know the seed was coming was Jesus. So Jesus, the seed is born. And, I, and you got to understand this. He is God who becomes man. We, uh, that's why we have church splits. If people can't understand this. God became man. And it, it was the only way that he could do it to, to redeem us back. I mean, you remember it was said, through Israel would the blessing come. It was predetermined that way, where it was going to come from. So he had to do it that way. Now, he's going to come through Israel. The promise, the blessing was going to come through Israel. They had this awesome responsibility of bearing uh, in them, bringing Jesus in the world. And they had become the biggest problem in the whole world. They had become so uh, inclusive, or not inclusive, but they so secluded from everybody else and built all the walls and, and become so high and mighty in their own minds, so arrogant. And, and we could say, why? You know why? They, that Israel sinned more than all the other world did. You know why they did that? Because they had the law. Yeah. And the very law's purpose is to make sin exceedingly right. sinful. The other people didn't know what they were doing, so but Israel did. So they their sin is above all of the world. 
Oh, man, so you can just see it all working together, can't you, here? So if Israel had sinned among all the other people, a question rose up among the rabbis and among the Pharisees and among all these other people. How can God be righteous then and keep his word? How can he, be, how can he bless us when we have messed up? You understand what I'm saying? Because if you'll read the second half of Deuteronomy 28, it says, I'll bless you if you keep my law. And they said, gosh, the blessing is over yonder, just like the church today says, one glad day over yonder, and I'll get my blessing. So they said, there is no way we can be blessed. You understand here? So we got a bunch, we got churches full of Jabez's. Jabez, if somebody told you your name was sorrow and pain, so you're just going to act it out. Pain and sorrow. And you know, that's why when God became a man, he became an Israelite. Because that's where the blessing was going. He didn't become a Russian. He didn't become an American or a Chinese. He became an Israelite. He became born under the law. And Jesus summed up every Israelite in himself. Now, we've went over this before, but he, he walked about demonstrating what blessing really is. But Jesus is not God pretending to be man. Okay? Jesus became man. And what I mean that is he became fully man. Entered, God entered into his creation. Took to himself all of the, the, the limitations of man. Yeah, he did. He took to himself all the limitations of all the helplessness of man. You remember the devil comes to him and tried to move him off of that? Oh, come on now. Quit acting like a man. You're God. All you got to do is say to these stones, be bread, and they'll be, they'll be bread. Come on, don't, quit acting like you don't have no power. I know who you are. What was his response? God shall not, man, man, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man. He said man. Because the moment that he would have acted like a God, he can't help me. He's five feet floating around on, he ain't going through what I go through. Listen, God is with you. He knows what you're going through. Each and every one of you, every moment, He knows. And you are never alone. And He's righteous in it. And He's there to bless you in it. Yes, I don't know if we get a hold of that. We, Lord, oh, my gosh. We, uh, people just don't believe it. He came where I am. He has come where you are. He had to put His feet where my feet. He followed that sheep. He tracked that sheep down, didn't he? He put His feet in the footsteps of that sheep and carried that sheep all the way back. He's got to feel my limitations. He's got to face the line, the fallenness of the world, the same as I do. Here is Jesus. He, he's totally trust beyond a shadow of a doubt implicitly trust his father. He had faith. And because he had faith, what do I see in his life? Blessing. He is blessed in his relationship with the father. How? Through the Holy Spirit. So what does he do? He goes about the world, and everywhere he goes, every situation he's in, he brings the blessing of God to the situation. And guys, I want to tell you something. He was the prototype human being. And you say, oh, no, Jesus said, the works that I do, ye shall do also. The works didn't stop. Healing is still going on. Multiplying bread and fish is still going on. And greater works than these shall ye also do. He was the prototype. 
Yeah, yeah, you with me here? He goes about, we call them miracles. He's just distributing the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. Go read it. That's yours. Every one of them is yours. When it says you are blessed with offspring, what are you blessed with? I ask people sometimes, well, I've had a blessed day. What do you mean you had a blessed day? You found a $20 bill laying on the ground? Well, so, so tomorrow, if you don't find a 20, does that mean you're cursed? You are blessed. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings. You want to go, go read. Just go read Deuteronomy 28. Read it over and over. Ask the Lord to just open it up and give it to you and see it. It's yours. Holiness unto the Lord. Bells of the horses will say, Holiness unto the Lord. When you get in your car out there, Roger, you're in the Holy of Holies in the very presence of God. That's why when you spun around in the road out there, the Lord was with you. It's not some fake thing. You're blessed. And then on top of that, I, I, on top of that, he introduces something else that has never been heard. Your sins are forgiven. Yeah. The Pharisees became unglued when he started saying that. Because the Pharisees says, wait a minute. You can't pronounce sins forgiven except on the day of atonement when the lamb has been slain. And now we got this punk dude named Jesus up in Galilee sitting in somebody's living room drinking wine telling them their sins are forgiven. Do you get what I'm telling you? we got to get rid of this cat. He's taken away our whole religion. Sins forgiven. Who does he think he is? I mean, forgiveness, Jesus walked around with a blessing and forgiveness scattered around like a sower sowing seeds in a field. Giving it away, didn't it? Loved it, smiled, and he did, he did all that. Else. He smiled and said, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. He was running around catching people. Hey, come here a minute. Your sins are forgiven, and I come here to bless you. I mean, what? You know, we watch the movie and he just walks around like a robot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's hunting people down. He says, Daggone it, I know there's a woman here that's been married five times. She'll be out here. I'm going to sit right here till she comes because I'm righteous and I will bless her. Yes. And I'm going to sit right here till I get her. Yes. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. With great excitement. Come on, Jesus, let's go down to Hardy's and get us something to eat. Nah, my meat's to do the will of the Father. Y'all go on. I'm going to sit here and bless this woman. The blessing has come. Jesus comes and describes himself as, as the first, the source, the beginning. The prototype. And then in John 14, 15, 16, 17, he declares to them the same Holy Spirit that's on me, in me, through me, I'm going to give him to you. I'm going to give him to you. He says he's been with you all along. You know, I showed you that. The Holy Spirit been there since from the, I mean, all through time. But now something different is going to happen. He's going to be in you. Your entire life will be blessed. I mean, God so loved the world. God the Son came and act to actualize that purpose. To be that love. So he bears our sin. Like a magnet when Jesus showed up. He's like a big sin magnet. And do you realize he gathered unto himself all the sin, past, present, future that could ever be? He gathered it unto himself. He became it. People don't believe me. People don't believe that. But he did it. I'm telling you. New covenant. New covenant in blood. He says your sin and iniquity I will remember no more. We don't confess our sins to God. I confess my sin to you. Because generally if I sin, I've hurt you or done something stupid to you. So yeah, it's right for me to go to you and say, Denise, I'm sorry I said that and I, I bothered you. And please forgive me. When I go to the Father, he says, I don't know what you're talking about. That's right. 
right? It's gone. That's hard. That's hard to swallow it. When he took away that sin, he took to himself all the grief, the sorrow, the abuse, the hurt, the pain. He was a magnet for it and took it all. It, it, all the griefs and sorrows and everything. And he took it where? He took it unto death. He died its death. He brought all of that abuse to death. All that pain, all that everything. Then what happens? The father raises him up out of the dead. And in raising him up, raised you up. You, listen, you participate in his raising up. Because really only one death counted, his death. You're, so you participate in his death. And what happened in his death? Everything was put to death. The curse, everything that bothered you was put to death. And in the, him raising up, you participate in his resurrection to walk in a brand new life where that stuff has no more dominion over you. Death hath no more dominion. That stuff has no more dominion. There's no more separation. God has done it. He is who he says he is. He's done what he said he would do, and I'm blessed. Yes. I don't know if you get a hold of that or not. Man, that is good news. That's the gospel. Jabez heard this every day his whole life, guys, and did not know it. His whole life, he didn't know it. Went to church all the time, didn't know it. So many people today are in church every day, and they don't know it. They don't hear it. When Jesus rose up from the dead, he changed his wordings. He said, guys, I'm going to sin now unto my father. But he ain't my father alone anymore. Now he's yours. Now he's become the God of Abraham. Now he's become your father. Right? Now he's the God of Patty. Now he's the God of Roger. Now he's the God of Jim. Now he's my God. And guess what? I'm his people. I personally belong to him because he is who he says he is. And he is righteous and he's faithful and his loving kindness in action right now to bless me. And I got something. Who can curse what God has blessed? Go ask him. Go ask Balaam. Who, who can curse what God has blessed? Go get up on the highest hill you can and look down and see what you see and tell me if you can bless God's people. Or curse God's people. You can't do it. You can't do it. And you know, all those promises sealed in the blood of Jesus, signed, sealed, delivered. Do, do, you, do you know that that Jesus in Galatians says? Uh, uh, Paul writes in Galatians 3 that he was made to be a curse. We were cursed, but he was made to be that curse yes. so that the Holy Spirit could come on us and bless us. And I told you that blessing affects every part of your life. Listen, and I, I, know, I just got to say this. Listen, Jesus was the prototype. I got to ask you, how many days... Did Jesus spend fighting the devil? There'll be people today fighting the devils and all next week fighting the devils and the week after that fighting the devils. I gotta ask you, if he's the prototype, how many times did Jesus fight the devil? He only dealt with him one time. Did he? The rest of the time, he didn't fight the devil. He just said, get out of there. Move over. Get behind me. He didn't say, okay, I got to get prayed up. I got a big devil fight today. You know, he, you know why? Because he knew who he was. I'm telling you this, guys, because I want you to know who you are, who is in you. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You are blessed. 
I'm not saying that. I mean, the warfare, God, the warfare is that you know who you are. Because the devil, his only battleground is to say, Kathy, that ain't who you are. You're not blessed. You're a sinner. Get behind me. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. The prophecy of Jesus. What is that? That is the speaking forth of Jesus himself. That's what prophecy is. The testimony of Jesus. I say, devil, you better go back and look at this covenant. I'm standing on the blood and surrounded by blessing. Now here's Jabez born into this. His mom comes in and says, you know what? That ain't who you are. Your pain, your sorrow, this is your destiny your whole life. This is who you're going to be. Pain and sorrow. And I want to tell you what, guys. All of us has come into this life with thousands of generations of people pouring into us, telling us who we are. We even got names. I'm a, I'm a Moore. You're a Gibson. We got names that tell us who we are. We're pain. We're sorrow. That's not us. That's not who we are. We're not like that. Right? Dad used to tell us something all the time. And I, I, now that I'm older, I understand it. But this was a common saying growing up because, you know, as kids, we don't understand money, what it's worth or how much it buys. So kids are always wanting stuff. Yeah. And you know what Dad would say? We ain't the Joneses. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Yeah. I didn't know who the Joneses was, but I thought they must have a lot. <laughs> now I want to be the Joneses. So, you know, just in that very thing, I'm a more. I'm not a Jones. So you see, there comes to us in our life, you're poor, this is who you are. You with me? In other words, that stuff ain't for the likes of you. And guys, every one of us has come into that world. Come into this world and it's been handed off to us. That, and you know, guys, I used to read about Paul and Peter. And you know what? Subconsciously, I would say, but that's not for the likes of you. You know, so now we, we just want a few crumbs on the table for a few crumbs, you know, because that's not for the likes of you. I can't walk in that. Well, good news is you can't. That's why he carries me, Roger. That's why he put me around his shoulders and carries me through it. An anchor to my soul. Strong consolation. You with me here? So we, we believed all that stuff, and then when we started looking around, we found all the reasons to believe it. You find all, you'll find what you're looking for. You want to have a bad day? Just start looking for it. I promise you. Amen. I prophesy. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt have a bad day. I can prophesy. If that's what you want, you'll have it. There are people that want to be sick. And they'll have it. I'll probably catch a flu. Amen. You will. Right? Out of the, I, I mean, we don't, we don't know who we are, and we let our mouths go around here and create a world. Mm -hmm. I'll probably catch that. <laughs> and we will. We will. Or we'll pray to the goddess of luck. I'll be lucky if I don't get it. We're a bunch of pagan weirdos. We don't know who we are. You're blessed. Yes. Jesus didn't worry about if I go up to the synagogue today I heard the flu was going around I'll probably get it he went up there as a blessing carrier as the blessing himself and said they got the flu and you know what he said they need healing I'm going yes. we go out and we put on rubber gloves and masks and everything else and say oh don't go to church you'll spread it well, guess what we're spreading blessings. So you bring your sickness on up in here. I ain't scared of it. Y'all ain't scared of it. Now if you got diarrhea, stay away. I just see it if y'all spreading attention. And to get a little laugh out of y'all every now and again to break the mood. You understand what I'm saying? 
I'll have to take that part out of the tape. Leave it. Leave it. You understand? So, so here we try to perform for God because we think God is just and we try to please Him and please Him. So we, we can't do it. We go to church and, and then they put more shame on us. It's pitiful. We've heard about these words of life but they come through us through the lens of darkness and sin and this distortion, <laughs> this iniquity. <coughs> Jabez had heard it his whole life and Jabez had faith in what his mother said. You understand what I'm saying? We have all had faith in what everybody else has said and not what God swore by himself saying and bless thee I will bless you. And I swear by myself and I'm righteous and I'm faithful and I have loving kindness to do it. And all of my business is about blessing you. The day finally came, and this is what we're going to get into next week, when Jabez finally saw it. He finally saw it, and I'm telling you guys, we saw it, and we are seeing it, and we shall ever see it. I didn't see the blessing, and then pow, it was over. I saw it. My life changed. I've seen it. My life is changing. My, I'm, I will see it. My life is forever changing. We realize we are the object of God's blessing. We are his beloved. He gives to us through the blood of Jesus the blessing. United to God himself through the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you what. Jabez became present. Jabez became present to the God that was always present to him. Did you get what I just told you? God is always present to you. Are you present to him? Jesus said, abide in me. That's what he's talking about. Be present to God. Now faith is. Not yesterday faith was or tomorrow faith will be. Hebrews 11 starts out, now faith is. I have faith. He is who he says he is. When Jabez got present to the God that was present then, he took all of his helplessness, all of his pain, all of his sorrow, all of it, and he leaped right into the arms of him who was faithful, him who was loving kindness. And now, guess what? He's living by another name. Now he's living by another name. He's living by one who... Now, I mean, you can go read that. He says, he was more honorable. Jacob or Jabez started living by a new name, another name. He called on the God of Israel. He said, hang on a minute. I need to get present to that God right there. And he just leaped into his arms. Are you, are you with me? Man, is that not good? Man, I just I want you to know because when you go out of here, guys, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged in this word that I just told you. Is it true? Is it not true? Because when you go out into these fiery trials which are to try you, and they'll say, Kathy, you're not blessed. How can you? You sin. You can't do this. You might say that. Well, God is who he's, he's come here to bless us, and he has done it, and you are blessed. That's the reason Paul, when he would write his epistles, would say, stop. Uh, he would say, stop. Put off malice. Put that stuff away. That's not who you are. You're blessed. Yeah. Stop the gossip. You're blessed. You ain't got time for that stuff anymore. Now go out there and be a blessing. You, you understand? Man, it just lights my heart up, guys. It, it, it lights my heart up. Now, finish that part up, guys. Oh.